now. Okay, hi everyone. Fundraising in a time of physical distance. So we're going to spend some time today talking about different opportunities where we can still harness the power of a fundraiser. We're not talking about an, an event, we're talking about a fundraising event, which is our primary goal of that event is to raise dollars. Okay. Before we start though, it is important uh, to really acknowledge that this is a virtual workshop taking place on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including that of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. No matter where we gather, if we're still on ceded territory, it's in my belief imperative and important to still acknowledge where we are. This is where I am today, which is currently called Chinatown. So our agenda, our agenda for today is I'm gonna have y'all take a little poll. It's a quick poll, gentle poll. And then talk about really why have a fundraiser. I mean, at the core of all of this is uh, whether or not it's physical, online, offline, whatever. I mean, why do we even have them? And so if we're really understanding the purpose of our events, that we can then pivot that same motivation, that those same desired outcomes into any space or place that we want to do. Uh, we should definitely touch a bit on our sponsors. I get this question a lot. What do we do with them? Or do we recruit new ones? How do we renew them? And then we're going to have a lot of virtual event examples that are happening right now. There's been a lot of examples over the last couple of months. And then we have an amazing esteemed partner, Kathy Brown, who's joining us to talk a bit about the Traction On Demand, their Traction Gather platform, and the way that they are presenting this new way that we can do virtual events. And then we're going to have some time for Q&A. So has anyone, uh, I wanted to actually begin, their Vantage Point just came out with an amazing survey. So Vantage Point is a capacity builder convener and they serve British Columbia nonprofits. And, you know, we have to really, I think, pause in this time of COVID and really reflect on the fact that there are 86,000 employees that are employed by the nonprofit sector. It represents over $6 billion of our GDP. I mean, we're an incredible force in the economic space, but of course we have such power in the way that we address different gaps in our social, environmental, and cultural ways that we provide and want to advance missions for stronger communities. So we are an important sector, and just like so many other industries out there, we have just felt the effects of COVID so tremendously, and this survey really highlights it. So 1,200 people responded, and I just wanted to give you some highlights level overviews and then an ask, ask a question for all of you is that 95% of <clears throat> respondents said that they had an incredible increased amount of stress due to COVID. Um, actually that number surprises me. I feel like it would be more than 100%. But 70, almost 75% of people reported your reduced contributed revenue. 60% reported a reduced earned revenue stream and Pretty shockingly, one in four think that they're not going to be around in the next six months. But with all of these very, you know, drastic um, results, there was still an overwhelming sense of optimism and resiliency because we are a resilient sector. We meet the gaps, we meet the needs. And I just think I wanted to ask all of you if you want, I like a little check-in question in the chat function part of the housekeeping. Um, any of you can use the chat function to communicate. I'm not going to look at them until our Q&A portion, but if you want to do a check-in question, say your name, you might already be listed as your name, but sometimes our names are different on our Zoom accounts. And just on a scale of one to 10, if you're comfortable sharing, how optimistic are you in the work that you're doing right now um, that you are going to be able to deliver on your mission? in this context of COVID. So just take a second if you're comfortable in the chat function, just to say your name and on a scale of one to 10, 10 being very, very, very optimistic. And I'm not gonna color um, what the results of this survey were. I'm curious if we might match, match that. Okay. So let's start actually, I wanna, with that as well, I wanted to ask all of you to take this poll for a second here. Second, secondary question, and I'm gonna look at the chat later and, and see how everybody responded to co collate those results. So here's my question to you. What is your fundraising event current situation? You have four options, you can pick one. Did you have to cancel? Did you postpone? Meaning you still might do the same thing, but later. So you might still gather physically, but not for a while. Um, or you're totally pivoting like onto an um, online space or you don't know yet. So if you can just take a second there and put in your results. 
what you think for your fundraising event. And if you don't have a fundraising event, just put, we don't know. You want that in the chat as well? Oh, can you see the poll? Did the poll pop up? No. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Take a second there. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Can everyone see the, the results are 75% of folks are pivoting. So in the context of the question I asked, that means um, that you're going probably virtual. 20% don't know yet, which is actually um, pretty great. Wow, it's a lot higher usually industry so far, but that changes daily. 20% of you had to cancel and 10% are postponing, which I assume to mean that you wanna do it the same way, but just later in the calendar. Thanks everyone for that. Poll is ended. So why have a fundraiser? <clears throat> we wanna raise money, right? And if we wanna raise money, there are a certain ways that we need to go about and things that we need to do to be able to get to our financial targets. And one of my biggest recommendations or with, with any sort of results that you're gonna see from a fundraiser, it really comes down to engagement. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Whether it's in a physical space or you're gathering with more than 50 people, or now that you're taking it offline, we need to really focus down into this idea of engagement. And when I ask people, often when they're trying to do different contribute revenue streams often we get we get to grants and we get to making a fundraiser and i love to dig into why have a fundraiser when it has actually one of the smallest returns on our investment and has some of the most work and so these to me are four big reasons why we would have fundraisers if they are so much work is this idea of this engagement and the first one being attracting new donors if we feel like we can attract new donors through direct mail or we don't have the budget or we feel like like we don't have a long enough email lists, a fundraiser event is a great way to bring in new donors to your organization. The second piece is it can create deeper connections to your cause. So this is all about your awareness, right? And when I talk about this space of, uh, I, you've probably heard me talk about cultivation before, where we want to really engage, inspire, educate our target audiences, our prospects to the work that we're doing in order for them to make a gift. An event is an amazing way to deepen that type of connection, but we need to tell your story. So when we're at these events, we need to have these compelling, maybe it's an alumni, someone with lived experience, really um, driving home about why, why the work matters. And, and again, this is about communications too. And this is whether it's in an email or direct mail or physically at an event. I mean, we can tell, we, can, we should be able to tell our stories and, and get deep connections and make emotional appeals um, to the work that we do. And I mean, I can cry over a podcast. So I mean, but there is there is a, a certain amount of energy that can happen at an event, as we know. This third one, deepen engagement by curating the experience. Sometimes we have difficulty in engaging donors if we are communicating over direct mail though, right? And so having an event is a great opportunity to get to know donors a bit more, our prospects a bit more. And just even on a different level um, with events, we can really curate these experiences like who's your MC? What's the atmosphere you're trying to do? What are your seating arrangements? What, are, what is the food? Um, and those types of things. And it's like, how can we do that type of curating an experience if we're not in the same space together? And I have some, ex and the rest of the time, we're gonna talk about these examples. And the fourth thing, my biggie, my favorite, referrals, use whatever word you like, if that's too salesy for you. But this is a great opportunity to really engage your strongest advocates, your major donors, to invite their friends, invite their networks to attend your events. So these are the big four ways. If you want to have a fundraiser to raise money, we need to be in doing engagement this way. And further to that, my, my three magical words about if you want to raise money and engage your stakeholders, we need a sense of community, we need to create urgency, and we need to generate momentum. And how do we do that in a physical space versus if we're trying to gather virtually, digitally, or have what have you. And so when I think about community, and I think about the type of sense of community we're trying to build in a physical space, 
there's a lot of networking that happens. So what do we do when we take that offline? I think some of the biggest ways that we can create that idea of community is curating the experience. We have control to curate an experience no matter where we are, right? And I think of food and drinking as an amazing way to combine that. We've, I've seen some examples of nonprofits doing recommended menus, right? So although you're not having dinner together, you're recommending a drink, you're recommending a menu. That is still delivering on that sense of it, an experience it is a shared experience. The second piece, it, big time though, is this is where impact happens. This is where that sense of duty, that sense of belonging creeps up into this idea of community. And we can do that by highlighting the impact of people's gifts, right? Why their gifts matter, especially collectively. Also in here is, uh, you know, you can create friendly competition. This is where peer-to-peer, -peer, which we're gonna dig into, which is a major component of pivoting now, is this idea of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which I'll get into. And this is where you can have friendly competition, you can have teams, you can set up your gala tables now as a team rather than physically sitting together. Got a couple great examples of that. Creating urgency. I harp on this no matter what format you're trying to raise money, we need urgency. And so what naturally happens in a physical event is it's time bound. It, there's a deadline. It's going to be over at 10 p.m. Uh, what, how do we then do that offline? And I, I still think there's ways that we can harness urgency by making sure that we still present a goal. What are we trying to accomplish? We still want to make it time bound. There still needs to be a deadline. We really need to use our skills to really um, nail down why we need the funds now, which is a big piece of our communication strategy, strategy which right now in this time and place, we obviously need to be sincere and open about what's going on, but we need to also really talk about the need and we need to reassure our stakeholders about the work we still intend to do, are still doing, even if we're in hibernation, so we can hit the ground running and I think also um, around this piece is if we haven't the, the ones that I liked a lot is which I we ha I haven't seen before and now I see it often is we talk about how much our fundraisers account for our overall operating budgets so I think that's a powerful piece in the work that we're doing if we're still trying to do a fundraiser and it looks like most of you are pivoting is to say you know Every, annually, this fundraiser accounts for 25% of our operating budget. You know, we still need those funds to operate and continue. And I think that's important, an important piece. The momentum, momentum is everything at a physical event, right? Like, how do we get that same type of momentum if we're not all 100 of us in the same room over the course of two hours? I still believe that you can get the momentum by making announcements. We can have announcements. I've got a couple of good examples. And announcements would be like, you know, so and so just gave their $10,000 gift, or so and so is just going to do a matching challenge. Here's another announcement of, oh wow, we're now able to do this because of that. You create momentum based on the energy of your communications, and also momentum is created by frequency. I would way rather see a nonprofit send out four announcements over two days than feel uncomfortable they're communicating too often and sending announcements once a week. You will never create momentum that way. So if you're trying to do an event, creating momentum also happens with the frequency of your um, communications within your set time bound frame. Also, momentum, of course, can occur if you encourage people to still gather at the same time. Even if you don't think they're all gonna come together, there's value at saying, let's all be here Thursday at 6 p.m. because we're gonna make an announcement or we're going to have a draw and in order for you to win, you have to be there. And I've seen, there's a, there's a couple of nice examples of folks using where they would have had their physical event as an opportunity to make an announcement or the culmination of their event. So it's still like a save the date opportunity. They're still checking in to say, this is when this would have happened. This is a, and I, and I think that's a, a missed opportunity if we're not looking at our calendars, saying this is where it was scheduled and this is what we're doing now instead. Whether or not you're doing it on that day, but still communicating on that day to me is um, pretty important. And so what about our sponsors? Just briefly about a note about our sponsors is there, there is no right or wrong answer and everybody's sort of navigating what's going on. But I have to say most sponsors that I know about have not defaulted for the most part, have not defaulted on their already committed fundraising events that they wanted to sponsor. 
That's the good news. I think people, the companies will, they're going through a very hard time right now, but, and then the second piece to that is your renewals. So again, it might be harder to renew a sponsor than typical, but we still need to be able to reach out to them and communicate to them, which is the second piece and reassure them, right? Re reassure them about the need. But the second piece of this, that's the most important is it's not just about you and why you need the money, your organization. We need to really talk to them. Sponsors are technically our partners. So what can we also do for them? We, we need to understand what motivated them to give to us in the first place. Why did they want to sponsor us, right? So whether that was through employee engagement, brand awareness, you know, target audience alignment at your event with different clients and customers, is that you can still achieve those same outcomes and motivations of your sponsors in different formats. We just have to sell it, right? We have to have a conversation, dig into, you know, why you do need them still, ask what they want to happen out of this um, presented maybe postponement or pivoting and you have to sell the opportunity. And I have seen some massive examples already of the opportunities of virtual events being streamed to so many more eyes. The VSO just hit 200,000 views on just their series of events that they have done online. That is way, way more than they would ever do in a physical space in a regular season. And these sponsors are delighted because it's still hitting upon their target audience it's not just anyone's eyes it's also their target audience and the demographics that um, classical music seeks to have their reach and it's being reached in far far spaces and places that they could imagine where their <clears throat> brands still are operating as well so they've got that local and national reach that is truly incredible and so those are the opportunities that we shouldn't take lightly when we try to expand our reach as well in our events sky's the limit when it comes to virtual and while I'm talking about sponsors as, as corporations, it, I should note about donations, corporate donors out there, you know, again, at the end of the day, even if a company is not sponsoring your event and they are still a corporate donor, there are opportunities out there for companies to get engaged. And although I wouldn't suggest a lot of acquisitions with companies to focus on because it is very volatile in the corporate sector right now. We don't know what's going to happen, but I like the example of Safeway. Safeway, just on a side note, Safeway did a huge matching campaign for the May 5th Giving Tuesday. Um, yeah, May 5th, Giving Tuesday, and they did a huge match, like a, well, like a 50K match for the day with the Vancouver Food Bank, and it hit all their check boxes of the outcomes that they would want for their brand awareness. They were helping the community, their employees felt proud to work there, um, customers felt proud to work there, and then they also had customers choosing to shop at Safeway based on that generosity, helping out with food and security spaces. So those are the type of examples that we're seeing in the corporate giving sector, and those are the types of things that we can still harness with our sponsors. So to just really, um, let's, so let's get into virtual events. I like to break them down into these two categories. They're either extended fundraising campaigns, or they are live streaming events, which can kind of be a bit meta because our live streaming events sometimes are pre-recorded, <laughs> but they're streamed live. Anyway, I'll get into that. So extended fundraising campaigns, what are those? These are things you would do at a physical event, but they are extended over a period of time. You know, these could be like your raffles, some peer-to-peer, -peer, and many of these things listed below here can happen over an extended period of time. And the advantages, there's major advantages to this actually, is that there's more time to share, there's more time for bidders to bid, and we can reach more people on their own terms. And even people who wouldn't physically go to your event are now getting more involved. So there's a lot of advantages to this one. The second one is, you know, and to pause is, by the way, virtual events are not new. <laughs> like, this is not a new thing. Virtual events and ways and spaces to gather are not something that came out of COVID. I mean, obviously it's really popular right now as a public health and safety and wellness issue, but they've been around for a long time and there are a lot of case studies out there and great examples. And why um, the advantages of these, these really do can harness that momentum too. I mean, we can try our best to do it outside of a physical event, but when we have a set time in the calendar, we can have that heightened peak of an event where you know we're making those asks, et cetera. But not everyone watches it live either. <laughs> so make sure that you do tape 
and pre-record. And again, just to round up about these virtual events, what we're trying to really land is that we need to be able to tell your stories. We need to be able to offer multiple opportunities to give on these. And it's a great opportunity to highlight your sponsors and donors, that impact recognition piece layered throughout your extended fundraising campaign, whether that's going on for one week or two weeks, or your live streaming event, what are your opportunities for recognition? And I can't say this enough, if you are making asks virtually, we need to make sure your online fundraising is easy to access. There is nothing more frustrating than a 10 touch point way to make a gift because you are going to lose so many donors that way. So we need to, no matter how fancy the programming you're trying to do, and it doesn't need to be fancy these days, is how easy is it for someone to click make a donation? Let's get into some examples. I mean, we can always also with, and I should say, the grace that we need to have for our events around tech issues, like, you know, me sharing my screen at the beginning there and the polling, um, that is inevitable. Like nothing is gonna be as polished as we would want it to be, but what can, what needs to be polished is our, on, our online giving pathways to making a donation. So I wanted to talk about the UnGala. Um, I'm going to go through a few examples here and then pass it to, to Kathy. This UnGala is a paya. It's from Seattle. And I really, really liked it. It's about um, um, what they did is they already had had a gala plan and they had to pivot really quickly. And their goal was to raise 200,000. They ended up raising almost 300,000. And they really did communicate that this was 25% of their operating budget and that they really did appeal to their community to continue to still support them. Uh, I want to show you what they did because rather than have it live streamed on one night, it was supposed to be on Friday night, they did a four day gala campaign. And this is how they set it up. And this is how they, they tried to get that momentum. And everything you see here in red is a video that they filmed that they ended up emailing and posting on social. And you can see this timeline here. And, and that momentum too is they, they would hold back announcements. You know when you sometimes have pre-commits and a paddle raise at an event? They would, they would lace those throughout the four days and have that heightened um, day four where they did the ask and the match. <clears throat> Thanks sponsors a lot. And if you look, and you'll have all these links to these to dig into more, if you look at their, uh, their, their videos, they had, you know, in, they were filmed in their black tie, like the EDs and, and such, um, which was a, you know, still a really nice touch. Something else uh, about this, because they have a great q and a. It's a really it's a really it's one of my favorite case studies for a gala that happened over a few day period, because you have to make those decisions about it being live or not. And they decided because it was Friday night, they weren't sure they were going to get people's attention. And the whole thing around that paddle raise, like you're creating that energy, you have that peak of an event, and they were like, "You know what? We did it." because of this with the announcements. We did it um, also how they created momentum is they, they use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising that they wouldn't have done in an in-person event. And how they broke that into was that they created their tables. So rather, so they had all of their table seating transferred onto a peer-to-peer -peer platform. So they had like, you know, um, Luke, Luke Skywalker, for lack of a better example of a name, they had Luke Skywalker as the team captain. He was the head of the table anyway, but and then listed all the guests and had all of their own um, fundraising individual contributions to the amount that they wanted to share. And it created a lot of momentum and competition that was really exciting and fun. That was something that wouldn't typically have happened in an in-person space. That's why I like this example so much. And they also, um, what they also did here is we can't forget about our vendors, right? And so they had always engaged the same auctioneer, the same MC year after year. So they still created that opportunity to get engaged. And also when we think about our caterers and we think about um, the venues that we would have had these spaces in, also to dig into how can we still involve them either as guests, either as advocates to spread the word, even as partners going forward about maybe how you can curate an experience of all having the same meal if you're ordering it from a local restaurant. And that was what um, another UnGala did in PEI. Their community foundation did a live stream event 
but they um, encouraged everyone to order from a set menu from a few different local re nice restaurants that were doing takeout. So that's again a way that you can engage people to feel like they're a part of something, to feel like they're part of a community by trying to curate that food experience for them based on your theme. And I think that's a low hanging fruit thing that we can do. And whether you have delivery, which I'm going to show you an example of where they're delivering the food to you. So you're all sort of breaking the same bread, even in different spaces. It's a, it's a fairly light lift. It can be. Sorry. And here's, here's an example of how, and they use the platform classy to showcase. And this is also part of the recognition piece. that's very important in our work and especially at a fundraiser showing names if they want to disclose names and not remain anonymous. I'm going to do this one quickly. This is the Indian Summer Festival. They had to pivot from a 10 day in person festival and they decided to do live streaming every Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, some of them are pre taped and then streamed. And this one from last week was um, a really powerful conversation. And they had the EDs do an ask. And they're going to be doing these every, every Saturday for 10 weeks. And they have a fundraising campaign laced throughout for $100,000 and every week there so far they've been raising a minimum of, of 10k which is exceeding their expectations and they're they're very excited and they have you know 1500 people uh, tuning in I think it was uh, three or five thousand last week with this lecture which is by far more eyes um, and it's not just about the not it's not just about numbers too it's about the messages about their mission and what they're trying to do to have a more equitable society so it's not just about sponsors getting you know more target audiences and customers it's more of our communities hearing about our important work and, and having more advocates out there to push our missions forward so there's so much opportunity with and again these are all links so you can look at these on your own time Oh, hello. Okay, this is the one that my the esteemed partner Kathy Brown is is um, put my way, which I'm so excited about. And I wish I actually had already attended, but it's not until Tuesday. This is uh, Big Sisters of Lower Mainland does this annual wine auction tasting. And it's like, if you can make this virtual, I think you can make anything virtual, right? And so they still want to, and, and so what they're doing, so it's a bit of a, a hybrid, it's live and extended. So they just launched their live auction yesterday. So you can continue, so you can participate right away, but they are asking us to continue convene on Tuesday at June on June 2nd 530 to 630 so they're not requiring a lot of time and what the programming and what's in here oh and here's the tickets because I get this a lot like just because it's virtual should we like waive a ticket fee no of course you should include a ticket fee and they've got this really and um, I really enjoy the structure that they have done their event registration is $30 and that gets you the link to the live streamed event and then you have an opportunity to prize, but again, uh, to win a prize, but you have to be in attendance to win. And I love that. So that really, like you mean, you might not like stay the whole hour or you might pop back in. We can only try and encourage as much, but only one hour um, is pretty, is pretty light lift. And there's these other levels that I love where they are going to send um, a charcuterie platter and wine to your house. So you give your address and there's other tiers. I don't know if I put them all here, but I have links to all of these. Oh yeah. And so it goes up higher too. And just like at a rake, you know, in a physical event, there's all these different tiered pricings as well. They get your address. I am going to totally get the post because I know a lot of, a few of you have already been talking about curating that food experience and delivering the food and I'm going to really audit the, and ask them after how that experience was how many attendees there were because of course with virtual the sky's the limit we don't necessarily have to sell out right but I would imagine that they would sell out of some of these other levels just for sheer capacity with deliveries but I'll get more information from them, but I was pretty, uh, I was pretty pleased with, with how they set it up and, and they really give you a timeline of what's going to happen. They have a couple of sommeliers coming on talking about the wine. And then of course they're going to talk about impact and the programming. But again, their auction has already opened up and they use for their auction click bid. Oh, we have Jason on the line here. We've got the amazing Down Syndrome Research Foundation 
that does your, um, and I'm going to invite you at the Q&A to speak more about your platform as well, if you like, because I really um, love the innovation and the pivoting of, of what, what you folks are doing. They're doing the run apart. I mean, this is definitely a very big revenue stream for you folks annually. And it's about, you know, gathering and coming together and having that sense of community. And I just thought it was so amazing to see the 5K broken down into those places and safe spaces and places that we can participate. So this might be virtual and we're not all gathering together, but people are still being physical, right? Like, so we, but we're just doing it safely. So although, you know, we're really convening virtually to share our stories and the work that we're doing, we're still encouraging people to get physical. And so this is just such a great example of that. And I love, you know, 5k is, you know, 656 laps around the living room. Uh, I just really uh, enjoyed how you, you broke that down. And again, there's some links there and, and I'm going to invite Jason at the end. I'm going to ask you questions about how, how it's been pivoting to this because so many of you out there have a, a virtual hike, a run, um, bike rides, all of those things can be translated into something like this. And again, and a lot of you also have a virtual golf tournaments. So, and how do we pivot golf tournaments? So this is the, um, this is the last example with links to it as well, is this one now golf, I guess golf has kind of opened a bit more. Um, well, a lot more, I've got a golf game in a couple weeks, I'm thrilled, but this is around walking the course safely. And I encourage you to look at the innovative ways because you can adopt this onto a run, a bike ride, a hike this kind of method and actually would be, um, and they use Canada Helps on their platform, which is really quite flexible in trying to do these peer to peer and customized pages. And this video I encourage you to watch as well. I love this video. This is um, an example of on May 12th, the day that the golf tournament was supposed to happen, they posted the video of the results from the two week campaign. So they had a time bound two week campaign to encourage folks to do, to walk the golf course. So there was golf courses, you know, we've been encouraged that they're great walks so that's what they did and then on the 12th they announced and they had great results and it's a lovely nine minute video um, and it really speaks into that sense of community that everybody stepped up and they're still recognizing the date it was supposed to happen so I really like this example oh, don't play there we go so what platforms do we use there are so many I can't like there are so many what I would recommend what I recommend is Canada helps peer-to-peer -peer pages and event tickets. I, I'm a big fan of, of how they use peer-to-peer. -peer. I'm a big fan of how you can customize pages. I've also heard some great things about Classy. And when it comes to auctions, I hear great things with ClickBid. When it comes to live streaming, we know Facebook Live, we know Instagram Live, we know Zoom, there's Google Hangouts, there's FaceTime, but YouTube is a, a great, great one that's, you know, a standard that you know, it's easy, like easy to operate and navigate. Um, movie parties, you can use Netflix party. And uh, again, with ticketing, Canada helps and Eventbrite. But I'm gonna pass it off to Kathy Brown to talk more about another platform that has emerged through this. It gives quite an integrated holistic experience about the virtual event. Kathy. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Amanda. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to uh, give you an overview of a product called Traction or a platform called Traction Gather. And Traction is a local company. You probably know it. It's um, their Salesforce partner and their founders are actually SVP partners as well, uh, Greg and Michelle Melpass. So many of you may know them. Uh, in, during COVID, they you know, rapidly pivoted themselves and uh, developed this platform called Traction, Traction Gather, which is essentially an online event um, uh, service. It, uh, but it can be more than just events. It can be for workshops and other types of, um, I guess, gatherings. You can pretty well see, oh, and they did their first trial um, in a big way with an organization called, I didn't know them, Boston Partners in Education. And apparently it was a, a, a huge success. And it was essentially their online annual, their gala, their annual gala that was done online. 
so you can pretty well see almost all the features that Traction Gather has um, by looking at this one screen. So, so let me kind of take you through the various components of it. Um, at the top, you see the menu items, and I hope you can see them. Um, and it includes, so I'm struggling to see it, sorry, shoot. All right, doesn't, it doesn't, uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's okay. No, I'm going to pretty well almost just talk from the screen. So let's just look. So in the middle of the center, you see the welcome address. I'm happy to interrupt you. Um, I'm assuming, Amanda, you'll send this, uh, this presentation out to us. Yep, with all the links and everything. Okay. So, sorry, Kathy. And that's that, okay. That no, no, that's okay. Yeah. So let's just sort of go through the main components as we're looking at them. And uh, so, of course, we have a keynote speaker, which is, you know, happening now, as you can see there. Uh, the online agenda is sort of rolling. They also adopted the idea of um, recommended menus. So they've sent out, and there's a whole dinner page, if you will, with the menus, and you can post pictures of how you did, um, you know, cooking, you know, putting together the prescribed menu. There's uh, various keynote speakers. They also supported the idea of um, multiple tickets. And there was a concept of, you know, gold ticket tables. And if you're at a gold ticket table, it gave you um, chat, it gives you chat access to the, the company or CEOs and the keynote speakers. So it, in this case, of course, your gold tickets can you know, you can give them whatever perks that you want. In this case, it was access to, um, uh, like I said, the CEOs and the keynote speakers. They really support the idea of uh, virtual tables. So you can sort of join different discussions, very much along the idea of what Amanda was just talking about in terms of engagement and community. So you can join virtual tables. So if you want to talk about uh, food insecurity, you can go to one table. If you want to talk about fundraising, you can go to another table. Uh, if you want to talk about politics, you can go to another table. And you can move tables, just as if you would in a, a um, uh, you know, real, real life situation. Uh, of course, there's an uh, online auction. Now, uh, now, this is a silent auction. Right now, Traction Gather isn't supporting the concept of a live auction that would have to be done in some other way. So, but it has full built in um, silent auction capabilities. Uh, of course, and then at the bottom, you see all the sponsors. And as Amanda alluded to, this type of platform gives actually your sponsors a lot more visibility than they probably would get in a live auction. So uh, they're finding that, uh, in fact, organizations using the platform are having an easier way finding sponsors than they have and are, are attracting new sponsors mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have otherwise um, attracted because there are so many eyeballs on these names at the bottom of every single screen. So that, okay, I'll talk a little bit more about how it's tailored as well. So this screen here pretty well repeats what I've just said. Lots of opportunity to promote and engage sponsors. Uh, they sell tiered ticket sales, VIP packages, the rolling agenda, to, so everybody knows what's going on at various places in the virtual room. Uh, virtual discussion tables. Something that I really loved was mm -hmm. um, the, red, the concept of a red carpet. So uh, one of the menu options at the top was it was red carpet where you basically go and, you know, you get dressed up and uh, you post your photos of, of yourselves all dressed up and in a virtual red carpet. Um, the wine and dine. So again, providing menus, ingredients and cocktail ideas and uh, driving donations both through the online uh, silent auction functionality that's built in and of course the uh, you know donate now button that's uh, prominently on the top screen so it um, it's sort of out of the box if you will offers all of these functionalities from a technical standpoint for those techies um, uh, it's secure right so it's Salesforce security so it's built in 
and it's it's actually video platform agnostic so it doesn't care uh which video whether you're using zoom or webex or google meet it, it supports all of the uh video conferencing platforms Oh, this is just another screenshot showing, uh, sort of giving you a visual of the, of the different round tables that you could join. So you can see how this could also be used for other things as well, for workshops and that sort of thing. So you could go and join um, any of these um, uh, round tables. And last screen. I think just from a standpoint um, of sort of how it works technically that um, uh, it does require a Salesforce uh, cloud and community license. So for those of you who are using Salesforce now, uh, you could just plop it on top. Um, we are looking at the possibility of SVP being able to host these events for investees. Uh, it, it's a Salesforce licensing issue as also as well as obviously SVP's capacity. So we're in really early stages of that. Um, first thing is the licensing. Uh, Traction provides services. So there is a certain amount of services involved in this. Obviously you have to load your auction items. You have to put your own sponsors. You have to customize the round tables. I mean, you can imagine that there's this platform, but then you have to kind of plug in your stuff into it. Um, Traction's actually offering those services right now. That's their model. The software itself doesn't cost anything. So their model is that they're providing the services. Uh, we haven't attempted to negotiate anything with them yet. Um, but and apparently it's still a little technical. This, by the way, is a fairly new product. So apparently it's not something that, say, um, like Gina and Amanda could do. Like you have to, it, has, it requires some technical capabilities or they still need to be able to do it. So they are charging fees in that for this. But of course, you have to compare it to the cost of renting a big room and all that. Um, there is an opportunity to do customization to meet very unique needs, right? So it doesn't have to just be within the framework you just saw. And then they also offer what they're calling sort of day of event management services. Um, and again, that's something probably, you know, a, a lay person could do, but it's basically making sure that it all runs seamlessly. Um, at the time during the day and this, it is kind of, this is sort of a, it's, I mean, I'm sure, of course, you can do social media campaign and all that leading up to this, but it is sort of designed as a sort of a, a one-time um, event platform, if you will. So that's just, and again, this is just an example, but uh, a lot of people in Vancouver are, are starting to talk about it. And uh, Amanda and I thought that you might be interested in learning a little bit about it. And that's, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. My little last my, my 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 typical last slide i'm going to stop sharing and we have 10 minutes for q a if there are questions hi everybody oh now we see who's all here yeah and i and i don't mind if people are unmuted too it doesn't let you talk at all at the same time anyway <laughs> unless there's something noisy in your background. Speaking of momentum and energy and stuff and physical spaces, I, outside of doing like a webinar, you know, I put people up, I encourage mute, but I really like when people are unmuted. So Kathy. It's less silent, yeah. <laughs> I have a, a comment for Kathy. Um, just wanted to say that we actually are meeting with Traction tomorrow about the Gather application for events. Oh, great. Uh, that's excellent. Yeah, I'd be interested to to hear. Do you, do you have Salesforce now? We do. Yes. So it's uh, natural. That's great. Yeah. Jason, well, can I ask you, you a couple questions? Turn it to you. Yeah. Um, I would. I'm curious. One, why why are you exploring traction gather for what? And the second piece to tell us a little bit more about your run apart event and the platforms you're using. Sure. Well, in the fall, we have. Um, a series of fundraising dinners that we do. And given the uncertainty of what's gonna be happening in the fall for gatherings, um, Traction, we've used Traction before. Like when we originally got Salesforce, they were the consultants that helped us acquire Salesforce and get it set up. 
So we've had a relationship with them. And then we found out about this gather application and had a demo and, and thought it would actually work with our event. So that's how we ended up looking at it. So um, as far as, what was the question around the, the run? Sorry. Just, uh, yeah, I'm curious how you pivoted and how you chose the platform that you're using. Right. Well, it was, so our events in June and in, I guess, the second week of March, when everything was exploding with a pandemic, we had to make a really quick decision on what to do. And, you know, didn't want to, we didn't want to cancel the event, thought about postponing it, but decided to do a virtual event, had no idea how it would work. Um, and we already used Classy for our online donations. Mm. And so Classy had the capability in conjunction with our website to do like an online um, event. Um, we were really strong social media presence with our, like with the Down syndrome community. So that's really helped with putting on the virtual event because we have a lot of people that interact with Facebook. And, and so we've been able to keep a lot of the things that you were saying earlier, like the momentum and the engagement, we've been able to do that through social media. Um, so the events exceeded our expectations. We've actually raised our goal twice now already. Yay! Uh, yeah, so we had, like I said, we had no idea what to expect. So we've been very pleased. Well, I love it. I, I can highly recommend Classy. So. Okay. It's a similar to a Canada Helps. I'm hearing good things about the both. Can I see a digital raise of hands? if you know where the raise of hand function is, or you can just raise your hand. How many folks on this call do one of those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers that are like the run, a hike, a bike ride? I can see you, Lauren. How many folks on here do it? I know Ride to Refuge, Run Apart. I don't know if Take a Hike's on here. No, they're not. They're not, Amanda. Yeah. Is there anyone else that does a run like that they do a couple actually they do the grouse grind one too right they do a couple okay. um the take a hike grouse grind is a third party event okay yeah so lauren i'm looking at you i'm going to put you on the hot seat are you still going to do your your bike um your ride to refuge is usually in the in september right correct or, yes and what are you in fact do? our our fundraiser laura is on a call right now with with their launch um, experience, so they're really mm -hmm. they're they're not seeing it, uh, this as a limitation in any way the current um, pandemic, but as an opportunity. Um, so they're shaping the ride around this virtual concept. I mean, they already have a very strong uh, platform that they they work off of, so it's um, it's already well resourced. It's just changing people's imaginations about the day of, and I think that's that's where I think the opportunity lies. Um, because usually it's it's hosted here in the lower mainland down in Richmond, very flat area. Everybody gets together, hundreds of people. And then, you know, there's an energy that comes with being together. It's kind of your comments here about um, the community, the, building that sense of community. It really happens on that day. So it's how to do that virtually now, I think. Oh, keep us posted. Questions, Jadine, I see you. Yeah, um, I, I also had a call with Traction uh, earlier this week uh, about Gather. Um, our situation is uh, we have our annual event that happens every October. Um, it is typically super fun because there's so many people in a small <laughs> space and it's a whole bunch of kitchens and food and wine and that is, uh, you know, this year for many reasons going to be impossible in the way that it has always been done. Um, we're also struggling right now with, I mean, people who are being hit uh, pretty hard in this are restaurant owners and chefs and, you know, asking them to give anything at this time is, is really in poor taste. Um, and, you know, they've been supporting us for so many years that it'd be, um, pretty unlikely that we would be asking them to support us. So we're kind of contemplating what to do um, with that event or that timing. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, it's in our budget for, you know, last year it, it netted us $65,000. And uh, so we're kind of trying to figure out right now, because now is the time that we would be, you know, 
full steam ahead with event planning. So we're trying to figure that and I'm looking forward to our call later today to talk more about it. But one thing that I've kind of found a bit interesting, we have uh, usually our, um, we have a, an event for our monthly donors every year. And we put out a survey this week to all of our monthly donors, you know, asking, hey, you know, are you a totally into doing some sort of virtual food event? Uh, or, you know, be 0% so over virtual events. And it is so split, you know, it was either 100%, 50% or 0%. And there's like no 50%. Either people are totally like into it, or 0% so over it. Um, and it's interesting for us because those monthly donors who typically go to our event in the fall are at the 0%. So trying to figure out, is it worth us putting all this time and energy into planning a, an, an gala of some sort um, for people who have no interest in it? So it's you know, our, our audience is going to be a really interesting thing to explore over the next few weeks, figuring out if we're moving ahead or not. Yeah. Um, JD, I would just, um, and for, for everybody on this call, one of our investees who is not on the call today, um, Backpack Buddies, are doing a virtual um, uh, chef uh, workshop um, with Fable Restaurant on June the 13th. And so you pay as a as a as a as a participant, you pay for the meal to be delivered to you, and there's add-ons, and then you participate in this workshop at a set time with with the chef of, of, of Fable Restaurant. So it's a beautiful way of supporting a local restaurant and also supporting also supporting um, the organization. So it'll be really um, great for SVP and all of our investees who are flirting with this idea and for growing chefs with it, it not exactly the same, but could be something similar to what you guys could explore, um, how they make out um, and, and how successful it is. I mean, the great thing about the virtual events is the number is endless. So in your case, Jadine, where you have that fixed number of people that can participate, as long as you have the um, support for the restaurants and delivery mechanism, maybe the numbers could be bigger. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's nice that these people are taking these, um, doing these pilot kind of projects for us to learn from so that we can and learn from all that information in, in our own planning um, of our events going forward. Thanks, Nicole. So we just have two minutes left. I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm going to follow this up with the typical Calendly link to have one-on-one -on -one 45 minute chats to dig into more. I, we, this wasn't enough time to show all the case studies um, and different ideas. And I'm, I'm really curious what's going to happen on Tuesday with the big sisters, their deliveries and all the things. And I don't think Fresh Roots, Fresh Roots on here because they also have an example of they do a beautiful long table dinner and part of the magic of that is it's in a schoolyard and the lighting and all the things and trying to get through how we could do that with maybe pop-up picnics or do we curate a menu do we have deliveries and just thinking through the logistics on that one so to be continued because that is a big revenue stream for them as well um, okay so thanks everybody this is recorded you're gonna have links you can schedule one-on-ones Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate all of your important work. You do great, important things. And at the focus in the end of the day with these events is we're just really trying to engage people about our mission and our work, right? So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great seeing you. Bye. 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 Bye.